It's story time. <laughs> okay, I am literally duct taped and bailing twine together to come to you this morning. I'm Kimberlyn and it's story time. And literally Comcast just walked out the door and I can't yet even accurately connect all my devices. So here we are and I wanted to just share a quick story. A story about having to be in two places at the same time. Maybe you have an experience with this, the concept of how do we do it? How do we multitask or even the most extreme is be in two different places at the same time. My husband has often uh, lamented that he would like to be able to be at work and at play <laughs> at the same time. Whether that play is gaming or sleeping or whatever is that this idea of being in two places at once is a phenomenon that has inspired so many movies and books and stories. I think it was um, uh, Harry Potter that had the, the Turner for, for um, Hermione, right? So in the sense that we don't yet know how to be in two places at once, I wanted to just share a quick story that was one of those exhilarating kind of victory moments for me, but also tells the tale of how we really can't manage being in more than one place at once physically. So this was many years ago and I was a teacher at a local studio and the classes were kind of, they had two rooms, we had two studio rooms and so the classes would kind of alternate with a bit of a, an overlap so that the staff could manage check in and check out without having to multitask the two classes. So as it is, um, I get word that the teacher for the class that's beginning right as mine is ending is unable to be in attendance. And I don't remember the details as to why, whether there was an accident or whether there was sickness or, but it was a last minute awareness, in which case, we couldn't find a sub teacher. There was no one else who could come in at that time and that short notice to begin the second class. And so on the fly, like for whatever reason, I was like, that's all right. I got this. I can handle this. I instructed the, uh, the check-in desk person to greet people and to tell them to go ahead and and enter into the beginning pose. We'd start with a, a rested, beginning, supported kind of a pose while I put the current class into a savasana, in which case blessed and closed that practice in silence, leaving my assistant to actually open the door when that class was done. So I set up the, the first class with understanding what was happening. We did the, the, the closing blessing and, and all of that, put them in Savasana and then tiptoed out and upstairs so that there was about a two minute delay for <laughs> the, the second class. But I remember feeling really exhilarated about this idea of teaching two classes at the same time, even if it was only, you know, in my head space and really for only a couple of minutes. But the truth of the matter was, and I was very clear to share this with the, the desk assistant staff who was helping me, that it could not have been done without having the assistance of my friend, of my fellow uh, studio employee. So in that sense, when I think about trying to be in two places at once, there is a, a challenge to the mental energy as well as the physical energy. And in this story, it worked because we were literally just two floors apart. We had to run up the stairs and I'm capable of doing that, more so then, perhaps than now. And because the practice can be met in that mindfulness way, it worked for yoga, right? But it doesn't work for everything else. And I found that particularly challenging 
when I had the third child. And now I've got three children in three separate rooms. I only have two hands. I only have, you know, direction of eyes that the temptation to multiply ourselves is real. And yet, we often don't nurture the relationships well to delegate the tasks that are so critical to our success. And I'm not talking just about when they overlap on accident. I'm talking about truly cultivating relationships of putting the best people in to do the jobs that they are best at. And as a business owner, that's one of the things that I look forward to most is finding people to join my team who can contribute their passion and their purpose. Even if it means they don't necessarily have the knowledge yet, the skills, and they're open to learning, we can work with that, right? So finding the right, pe right people and letting them sort out what jobs, what tasks make sense for them is really not only good business sense, it's good human sense because it allows us to find the niches that we can do our best work, right? So in the sense that the bond that I have with this, this individual who helped me facilitate, uh, there is no one who is gonna die as a result of starting a class late, right? But the challenge, the exhilaration, the fun, the playfulness of looking for a solution that could accommodate the wrapping up of one, the beginning of another, and fuel this union between me and my fellow worker to find the solution. That's where we really start to build not only confidence and competence, but we build collaboration and community. And that's, that's a beautiful thing. So rather than trying to multiply myself, right? Rather than trying to have my YTT, my teaching students, become a mini me, I want them to become a magnanimous them, right? But the way that we do that is a little bit challenging because I can teach you how I do things. I can't directly teach you how you do things. We have to discover that through trial and error, through dialogue and discussion, through exploration of our intentions and our skill sets so that we can know what actions work. And this becomes particularly important when it comes to how long do you stay in that task, right? If the task initially sounds doable or interesting but doesn't prove to be, then it's time to move on. But we have to remember that the performance of the task does not always correlate. In fact, it doesn't correlate to the quality of the person, right? It doesn't mean that they're still a good fit for the organization, but sorting out the difference between our worth as humans, as fellow sojourners, as well-intended humans on this path versus the quality of our work, right? The application of our skills or the advanced techniques that we're learning. So with that in mind, I try to remember for myself that in the long run, it is absolutely better to train others to be their best selves, to do their life's work and find where our work overlaps for collaboration than it does to continue to hope and pray and try to trick the timetables to be in two places or more at the same time. All right, I'm going to finish setting up the studio for this morning's class. We've got a 10 o'clock practice this morning, and it looks like I still have my cabinet open from when Comcast was here. So there's some things that I need to do, but I'm going to do them one step at a time and what gets done gets done. But I'm excited to say that Life's Work Yoga has a new teacher, actually a returning teacher, joining us now for this morning's class. So I get to not teach and take a practice so that I can nurture that component of my story as well. Thank you so much for letting me share this story. I hope that you can find some playfulness in challenges times when maybe you have to be in more than one place at once, but looking for ways to delegate those tasks and ask for help from your community, from your friends and your family, and nurturing their contribution. Because truly, when we can support each other through our actions, it is love in action. 
Thanks so much. Have a great day. Be well. And bye for now.